Welcome back. And today is, of course, a midterm budget day and a big one for us here in South Africa. Finance Minister Inok Godongwana will have a tough balancing act as spending priorities compete for limited resources. And this, of course, as he delivers that midterm budgetary policy statement later today. The policy statement comes against a backdrop of a challenging economic environment, which some economists say that Godongwana needs to produce bold courageous and creative measures to mitigate. Now, it's believed that uh, top of the agenda of National Treasury's plan over the medium term will be the ESCOM debt, the public sector wage bill, as well as social relief amid the high cost of living and, of course, high unemployment. Uh, Musa Manyati is a director for tax at Deloitte Africa, and we're also joined by Bushra Razak, who is the CEO of Philippi Village. Uh, Musa and um, uh, 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 Bushra, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Welcome to Good morning live. Thank you. Good, good morning, Sakina. Thank you for having me. Let me start with you, Musa. Um, you say that if the South African government is serious about driving growth, it's going to need to start thinking, acting outside of those ideological boxes. So let's talk about that. Where are we stuck and what should we preferably be looking towards doing? Um, good morning once again, Sakina. Yeah, that, that's absolutely right. I think uh, our problems, our challenges are actually known and, and we have known them for quite a while. Um, the biggest challenge, obviously, is just around our energy, or let me say the absence of our energy right now. So one of the critical things that we're expecting to come out clearly today is of course relating to ESCOM and exactly what the government is going to do there to try and support ESCOM um, by specifically cleaning its balance sheet and whether we're going to see the government um, taking off some of the big debt because one of the biggest problems that ESCOM has right now is of course the debts that are just way, way high. So we we we'll want to see what the government is going to do around there, um, whether some of that debt is going to be taken over from that balance sheet. And, and also, we would also want to see if there is going to be any specific focus on the infrastructure, Sakina, because if you look at the absence of energy on one hand, and you also look at the fact that we haven't for a while now been um, investing in the infrastructure, which is the backbone of economic um, activity, which obviously lead to, uh, to, to employment, which also lead to more activities in the market. So I think right now, creativity will need to be exactly what is the approach the government is going to be taking then to investing in the infrastructure right now. So just sticking with ESCOM for a moment, uh, we know of that um, 131 billion rand uh, fund and the Minister Praveen Gordon, you know, spoke about that. And now we're seeing competing interest for uh, that particular um, uh, money that's sitting or will be available. And ESCOM is said to want the lion's share of that to actually focus on infrastructure development. What's your take on that? Um, I, I, I think that should definitely be our starting point. With all the plans that we could have, with all the aspirations that we could have as the nation, without ESCOM being fixed, without the energy supply being secured, um, most of our aspirations really will just simply evaporate. So my view is that any money right now that is spent on stabilizing ESCOM, that is spent on making sure that we can secure our, our energy supply will definitely be correctly spent. Um, and, and I would like just to take a slight detail, um, Sakina, because I think while we're talking about the ESCOM and the energy supply or the absence of it, there's, there's also really good news of the overruns uh, from the revenue collection which is happening right now. And, and, and that money is actually available and could be used. And the only question is whether that is going to be used to try again and stimulate some economic growth, to try and relieve the debt that we have got, 
or that one is going to be going to some of the populist, um, you know, slogans that we are hearing every day. So the combination of the efficient use of the revenue collections on one hand and, and on another hand, the focus on economic growth and the infrastructure development is the combination that we certainly need right now to try and um, make sure that we're putting our economic trajectory on the right track. Mm. Um, and just by the way, just as an aside, not forgetting that that financing is, of course, another loan on top of what is already owed. But Bushra, let me bring you into the conversation. Now, uh, y your organization, as I understand, is directly involved in tackling and revitalizing the township economy. Now, against the backdrop that uh, we've sketched already with ESCOM and the effects that this has had on uh, the South African economy overall, let's just hone in on the township economy and what's happening there at the moment. Thank you so much, Sahima. As we all know, township economies face numerous challenges, all of the challenges Musa has spoken about and that we already know. And I think the more that we recognize the importance of establishing uh, a revitalization process around township economy, um, we're not going to get much further. We're recognizing at Philippi Village, which is the organization I work at, that we, we are a space within the township that acts as a dynamic middle income economic structure on a large scale and hosts a range of different businesses, both labor intensive and small enterprises that are suited to absorb the different skill levels available amongst the township's unemployed population. And we're trying to do it in a, in a space that's safe and, and community centered. So while we look at bills that are passed and, and think through, for example, this township uh, economic development bill and are enthusiastic because we can see that there's a link between SMEs and um, clusters of township suppliers, I agree with Musa, it needs to be a lot more innovative, a lot more bold, and um, for me, as someone who represents private sector in a township economy, a lot more uh, people focused because behind these statistics are histories and, uh, and people who can help guide what this revitalization should look like. So you also say that uh, South Africa's alarmingly high rate of unemployment needs to be a priority in uh, any effort to help kickstart the country's economic revival. Um, but this is something that obviously you come face to face with on a daily basis in your work. Uh, just tell us about, you know, how your organization, uh, organization is involved with providing some of the solutions needed for uh, some of the township uh, economies at work. Absolutely. So Philippi Village was actually an old cement factory and it was started in 2016. And I think I must recognize that initially we, we failed. Our idea was to provide employment and to support small businesses in the Philippi community, but we weren't seeing any occupancy. We weren't seeing any uh, small businesses able to retain space within Philippi Village. And we had to take a step back and reimagine what employment looked like. Uh, what we did was very quickly, I'll explain to you the, the, the journey here. We spent a couple of months mapping all our immediate neighbors. We mapped almost 1,700 homes asking everything from combined household income to education levels and to what the barriers are to employment. We started designing our space and our offerings in response to that and recognize that the employment is beyond uh, skills upgrading. It's recognizing the role a cross-sector partnership can play and it's recognizing how to absorb different skills into a space and create a space that's inspiring and safe. So in our space right now, we, we're a mixed development emerging entrepreneurs, local residents, small businesses, but we also have everything from skate parks to gardens to trauma um, centers, ECDs, clinics, uh, city library, a BMX pump track, coffee shop, where we can bring social networks, conversations, exposure to the township and create an environment that's dynamic and in response and intersectional. All of these activities kind of cross over and have the community at, at the heart of them. Uh, uh, Musa, if we look at the township economies, and this is estimated to be providing 17% of the country's total employment and contributing 6% to GDP, and that's nothing to scoff at. However, if you look at the many challenges, as uh, Bushra has just pointed out, that still exist there and are hampering the growth of the sector, 
how do you think that can be overcome? How do we then um, in address the, uh, how do we address these issues when drawing up a budget, as an example? Yeah, um, I, I don't think there is actually just one solution to that, um, Sakina. I think there is a number of things that the government will need to be looking at, and, and maybe starting really with the with some of the basic stuff. And um, and there we're talking about the, um, the the focus in the township economy, and we've heard a lot about that. But I think beyond just talking about it, I, I think. There need to be a very clear program of action in terms of what exactly need to happen there. So, so that's the first thing, making sure there's a clear program that talks to how the township economy is going to grow and develop and then how it will fit into the broader um, formal economy. But well, Musa, if I can just... Course, if I may just interject there, because I want to ask uh, Bushra, someone who works actively in the sector, how much consultation are you ever engaged in with government, with Treasury, about uh, the sort of solution that Musa has just mentioned? Very little. We're seeing an increase in it recently, but we've been very removed from a process that directly affects us. And I think, for me, that's the key to what the next steps look like. It's, it's not looking at a township space as a, a problem, but the proximity to people who are engaging in these uh, issues every single day should be part of the consultation process. I think these people should be ident systematically identified as the most critical stakeholders and processes that Musa is speaking about should be led by, reimagined by, and guided by, by these stakeholders. Uh, thanks, Bushra. Just uh, apologies for that, um, uh, Musa, but I thought it important at that point just to get a sense, since we have Bushra here, of how exactly this process unfolds, because perhaps some of our problems uh, actually stem from the fact that we try to come up with solutions for people without actually engaging the people who are directly affected. Yeah, that, that's absolutely right. And that's the point that Bushra was, was talking to right now, that um, unless you have a proper consultation and, and the bringing on board of the people that are affected by the solution that is being designed, you are always going to have some challenges further down the line. But, but the point I was also making was that in combination with that, together with that, um, obviously, as I've said before, infrastructure is the cornerstone right now of what we can do to try and, and move our economic trajectory forward in a more positive way. Um, we also have rating um, agencies, right, that are looking and, and wanting to see exactly what's happening in our economy. And all of those things in the end um, have either a positive or negative impact to our economic outlook. So, so one of the things that I would expect the Minister of Finance to touch on is exactly how do we deal with the debt which, which the country has right now, which is um, deemed to be quite excessive. And, and the reason why that is important is, is precisely because the rating agencies are going to be looking at that. And if we get downgraded, that will have a direct impact on the outlook for the country, which is already at, um, at a challenge right now. I mean, given the fact that the IMF has again um, reduced our growth prospect. So, so we are at a stage where we need not only a number of interventions, but also a deliberate focus on what exactly the plan of action is going to be to make sure that these things are progressed to, to their fruition. And, and I suppose, for me, that is part of the frustration that I have, Musa, because we, and, and, and many people have said this, uh, where it seems as though we legislate, we budget, we plan for the ratings agencies. We've done that for the longest time. But how has that worked for you and I? We haven't seen the sort of economic growth that we talk about uh, that will probably uh, be revised um, I don't know, maybe downwards again, whatever the case may be. But we have all of these plans in place, and yet we are stuck, and if not stuck, it's getting worse all the time, especially uh, for the middle class. You spoke about revenue um, collection, and I'm sitting here wondering 
why can't I get a tax rebate for the university fees that I pay? Uh, you know, as the middle class, for all the things that we pay for, that government is supposed to take for, why aren't we seeing more tax rebates for that? Uh, th that's precisely it, um, Sakina. So, so you have tax collection on one hand, and, and here I would like actually to give a lot of credit to National Treasury and, and SARS. I mean, all of these overruns in tax collections that we're talking about right now are as a result of hard work, really, that the National Treasury and SARS um, have put together to try and stabilize SARS and just make sure that it's a functional institution. So, so it's one thing to do tax collection, and the key is, is precisely what you have outlined now. How then do we actually use that money? And, and, and I agree with you, just given where things are right now, um, with the cost of living rising, with the interest rate going up, with fuel prices going up, uh, the metric class is, is certainly better, uh, better than one would really love to see some kind of um, some kind of rebate. But I think to be realistic, that, that's very unlikely, um, Sakina. If anything really um, should happen, um, I, I think it's around just looking at how do you then continue assisting the poor, um, those that are marginalized. Um, and, and this is talking directly to the SDR. Um, are, are you going to keep that permanently? Um, we, of course, understand that just for now, that has been extended to next year, March. Look, I think to be honest, I can't see that going away after that. And if you look at the government studies they have done um, by themselves, you know, they seem to be defying the notion that this is not going to be sustainable and this is not going to be affordable. So they have done some preliminary numbers and studies that are indicating right now that actually the government can afford this. So, so you're talking about getting some rebate and, and somebody out there is just, you know, talking about only if I can just have a... Um, you know, another another plate on the table for, for the family. And that is where the, the SDR and its extension actually becomes critical. Mm. <clears throat> and all the while, the so-called middle class is one or two paychecks away from joining the ranks of the poor. And um, Bushra, just in closing, uh, you know, your expectations, um, what could Minister Inok Odongwana say that will uh, be beneficial to the township economy and, you know, just uh, giving it a greater impetus in order to hopefully employ more people and just grow uh, the country's GDP as well? Thank you. I think, as Ms. said, there will be lots of focus on consolidating debt, reducing reliance on social grants. Um, but I think what I'd like to see as someone in the private sector who is working on revitalizing township economy is what we spoke about earlier. How do these uh, decisions, how do we get to these decisions? What does the stakeholder engagement process look like? But beyond that, again, how is it fed back to communities? It's very easy for us to have these conversations here. How does this information uh, get back to community members? How does this information get back to people affected by it in a way that they uh, understand, recognize their role within it, and are able to all contribute uh, to both the design the, and the feedback around uh, what, the, what it looks like? And Musa, just finally, from your side, your expectations very briefly. Yeah, look, I think uh, that there are four key things that really we, we should be expecting. One is, um, you know, in, in my own mind, I always see ESCOM as the heart um, in a human body. So if the heart is not working properly, you are likely going to face challenges. So if our energy is not being fixed, the ESCOM is not being assisted properly and fixed, that's always going to be a problem for our economic prospects. The second thing is, you, you obviously need to focus on the social aspect of, um, of what's happening in the country. So I expect that the minister is going to talk more around the SDR and give some certainty on what's going to happen there. Of course, the biggest elephant in the room for me is also just the, the public sector wages, Akina. Um, 
we know now that the, the, the labor unions are actually proposing to strike. And, and the unfortunate part there is often when we are talking about the public sector wage and how we would expect it to come down, we, we often think, and what jumps to our mind is probably the long queues we see at traffic department, at um, home affairs, but we actually forget that, you know, right in that same basket, we have doctors, we have nurses, we have teachers, and all those people right now, definitely we, we're lacking them, we're lacking their skills, and some of them are even leaving the country. So I think we need to bring in some balance when we're talking about the expectation that the public sector um, wage should be coming down. Mm. Well, thank you so much to both of you, Musa Manyati, uh, Tax Director um, at uh, Deloitte Africa, and Bushra Razak as the CEO of Philippi Village. And of course, we're asking you about uh, this in our question of the day as well. What are your expectations from this afternoon's uh, midterm budget policy statement that uh, Minister Ido Inok Odongwana will be delivering at Morning Live SABC? Let us know what your views are. Let's take a quick break before news.